Hey folks, Michael from Doom and Darkness, bringing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is going to be the last uh, shit and talk for 2018, and I just wanted to make a quick video to go back over some of the um, highlights and the achievements of this year, and then talk a little bit about some of the goals um, that I have for 2019 and um, move forward from there. So, first up, we're going to have a look at some of the armies that I completed and some of the tournaments that I went in. Now I'm only going to show the tournament armies that I um, uh, I completed and that I competed in. And not all of them as well because um, some of them that where they weren't 100% polished don't make the cut unfortunately. So the first army on the left hand side there that's 2000 points of mixed chaos that I took to CanCon 2018. Came 29th in that tournament, 104 player tournament and ended up coming 29th and um, was really quite proud of the list that I took. So 10 Marauders, 10 Ungor, 10 Ungor. Um, that was before Marauders got made minimum of 20, obviously. We had Valkyr the Bloody, which is such a good just loan model for tagging units. We have the Ark Warlock, who is just fantastic for his points, and I used him as my little teleporting, skid leaping um, mobile assassin. We had the Vermin Lord Deceiver, my favorite Vermin Lord of all. We had a Lord of Change for Zappy Zappy, the Demon Smith for the minus one to hit spell. But uh, sorry, that was minus two to shooting at the moment. At that time, Skyfires were everywhere. Being able to put minus two to hit on a shooting unit was really quite powerful. Then we had the Varengard still to this day, uh, probably my most favorite models in all of Warhammer Age of Sigma. Storm Fiends for Burnings and Java Slice when they were still good and super, ch super cheap. So they came 29th for that tournament and that was my first really big interstate tournament that I had ever been to and um, was pretty happy with my result. Next up we had a thousand point tournament here in Adelaide called Gobicon. I took Mixed Chaos again and uh, it's largely the Mortal Wound outputting nuts and guts of um, my previous list. However, with the Gaunt Summoner um, taking the place of the Demon Smith on a Bowwind because that was awesome, and two units of um, Plague Bearers just for a little bit more staying power. I was on, it's a four game tournament and I was on two wins, one loss when I had to leave early because my son was in hospital. I was pretty confident I was gonna go to three wins and one loss and end up third, but you never know because I had to go, that was a shame. Then we had uh, Badgicon in uh, Bendigo two-day, 2,000-point tournament. I um, uh, has collected Nurgle from scratch, started them up, got them completely painted, and uh, took a Plague Touch Warband, Warband uh, down to that tournament, and then came a knight for that tournament. Um, that was enough experience with the Plague Touch to make me know that I never really want to play it again, and it's not particularly my type of play style as well. Anything that is a denial army, it's probably not my kettle of fish, debuffs and things like that. Didn't leave a good feeling in my mouth for sure. Then we had Southern Impact where the Gut Busters made their first appearance at a tournament. I ended up coming third. That was a one day, three game tournament. I came third at that tournament with a um, uh, two major victories and a minor loss. Um, uh, that was really cool. Painted up the jaws. They're hot garbage, but um, really cool models. And um, I have to say, this was just a really enjoyable experience. Finished all my games in time, had a good smash, and um, just a really enjoyable day. And it was at this point that my attitude, after coming off the back of playing a Plague Touch, to going to play where my games didn't finish on time, and um, other things to going to play Gut Busters, where it was just all fun and all my games finished on time and so forth started to make me reassess what I wanted out of this hobby or what I um, wanted to achieve with the armies I was playing and why blah 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 uh, and then finally we had Sydney GT um, you know the gut busters were always just going to be for sort of one day events and have fun and this sort of things but um, never expected that I can or could be uh, seriously competitive with them and um, when I took the play touch to Badgicon I always should have just taken my Mixed Chaos so uh, took my Mixed Chaos again with a, a revised Mixed Chaos list to Sydney GT and came fifth that was a two-day 74 player tournament 
came fifth at that, um, and that was with Angor Raiders. Angor is my battle line, Hell Strikes is Slanesh, Verminor Deceivers, I mean Verminor Deceiver, Verminor Warp Steer, Kedai Fireborn, um, Storm Fiends, and Varagard. When I look at this list now, I'd fucking rock this again all day long. Um, I could swap the Varagard out for Dragon Ogres now to do exactly the same job, but um, yeah, I'd be more than happy to take this list and uh, mix it up with, uh, with whatever we've got. Um, since then, obviously, I've had two other tournaments. I've had um, um, a one-day tournament with my uh, Beast of Chaos Dench, but that army at that point was not 100% complete. It was meant to be my CanCon army, and I've now changed to Gutbusters. I was going to put my Gutbusters army up, but it's really, truly going to be a 2019 army, so we'll show that next year. Along the way, I've also completed, you know, I've had Stormcast army, um, Slanesh Army, all these sorts of stuff, but I don't feel yet that they are as 100% 100 com 100 complete um, as I'd like to, and so that's why I've just sort of shown these tournament armies. I want to say that um, uh, one thing that I've realised this year, well, I always knew, but especially with participating in GTs this year, is that um, there's nothing like a tournament deadline to help you achieve your hobby goals. And so my suggestion would be that if you were a little bit flailing in the wind, a little bit um, drifty between different projects, never really getting anything completed, sign up for a tournament and um, you've got a hard goal and uh, you'll complete your army by then for sure. So um, I want to talk about the community for 2018 as well. So a big thank you to all of the new subscribers and the old existing subscribers we've had for quite some time as well. We're currently at 2,780 subscribers, I think, which is um, really, really amazing, and um, it is a fantastic channel. Um, the patrons are growing as well. Um, I have most of my patrons are actually significant patrons, you know, $10 a month sort of thing, um, but every single one of you is appreciated, and it does really, really help me um, with the channel. So. Um, thank you very much to you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, I want to thank, thank all of the online content creators. So I want to thank people like, um, uh, well, firstly, um, uh, Rob and Vince from Warhammer Weekly. A big thank you to you guys. You're a staple of my uh, online content consumption. And um, thanks for your ongoing support with the pick of the weeks and so forth. Um, I generally know that if you guys are enjoying content that I'm making, then I know that other people are as well. So that's really, really good. Big thank you to people like Rob Symes, obviously, who's, um, you know, just providing me with stuff to listen to and, and keep my Warhammer brain thinking about Warhammer all the time. So that's excellent. And then there are just so many um, Warhammer content creators out there um, that are just doing good things for the community. Um, Heralds of War, for example, Fail Charge Podcast, Mortally Wounded Podcast, you know, these are some of the um, Australian ones that are just um, keeping my ears uh, fueled with good, happy Warhammer excellence, so um, that's really awesome. There's also been a lot of new people that have started up this year, so we've got Mango Radio, for example, we've got um, the Measured Gaming guys, we've got the Dwellers Below, the Dwellers Below obviously being old group, which have come back again. Um, so welcome back to those and um, welcome to all of the new content creators. Um, it's just fantastic to see the explosion of both YouTube channels and um, podcasts and so forth. A lot of amazing battle reports out of there if people want to learn armies and um, just a lot of good topical stuff as well. Um, I was invited to join the Australian Masters Committee, which is um, fantastic. It's great to know that people um, want to hear my opinions on how we can help try to make continue to grow the Age of Sigma um, community here in Australia and everyone on that community, fantastic people dedicated to the betterment of all. I've met a hell of a lot of friends um, at tournaments. In fact, I've met, like, this year has been the largest year for meeting new people and making new friends, and that's mostly come from traveling and tournaments. Um, it really, when you have been talking to people online, 
and interacting with people online for quite some time and then you go physically meet them you get the opportunity to go out and have a beer and things like that with them um, it really makes for good friendships and people in Warhammer will often do a lot for each other so someone that you've only met for the first time like Anthony Magro for example you know and you really met him and had beers with him once and then he lets me stay at his house um, just amazing it, re it really people go a long way for each other in this hobby and when they do that it really makes strong friendships um, and it's a really fantastic thing it's the best thing about um, Warhammer is just the friends that you make um, within this community like that is a hundred percent the absolute best thing and I feel that at the moment I could travel to almost any state or any city and I've got friends there waiting for me um, and that's a really powerful thing like that's that's something that a lot of people in the world can't say or do or wish they had and uh, we as uh, Warhammer players who may often be laughed at and scoffed at because of our obsession with playing with little plastic toys have something that the West, rest of the world probably wishes that they could so um, absolutely amazing um, as I said before great new channels and um, and personalities uh, a lot of new people starting up and um, just a lot of new relationships to be built there and um, everyone has something new to bring to the table and uh, and I'm, I'm just loving um, the stuff I'm, I'm listening to at the moment. I want to give a, a shout out to the Gut Busters community in particular. Uh, they're a small community, but they are so passionate about Gut Busters. They really love ogres. And um, there are some key staples in that community which have just been instrumental in helping the other players in the community, but also helping myself as well to um, grow and develop with my own Gut Busters. So, People like um, James Sutherland, um, he has a YouTube channel. You know, he has a YouTube channel and he has about 25 subscribers at the moment. He does a uh, sort of spoken battle report of every game that he plays with them. And um, the knowledge, and he, he just loves his guts, and the, the knowledge that he has through actual real play experience against a wide, wide um, variety of armies has really been invaluable for me in um, building... Um, my list I borrowed from him quite heavily uh, people like uh, Larry Barber as well um, uh, another uh, gut buster community legend um, you know he's been a subscriber of mine for a long long time before I was playing guts and um, since I've been playing them you know he's an, a big advocate of them and um, he's been pushing Noblas on everyone since since the beginning of time but um, people like him uh, people like Mike Wendell, um, you know, who won a tournament with them recently over in, the, I think it was Ireland. Um, so the thing about these guys is that they're all really good players. They all play a lot, and um, the most important thing is they really, uh, they really take the time to help every other person, um, and that's the most important thing. Because if you go onto the Gutbusters um, Facebook page. It's called Gutbusters AOS. You could basically just go on and share your minis, right? Something you've painted, and everyone will support what you've done because we all love seeing the yogas. You could um, get on there with a list and ask what you think, what people think about this list, and you would get honest feedback. But you would get feedback from James, you'd get feedback from Mike, and you'd get feedback from Larry as well. They would all sort of help you. Or point out what areas might be weaker, what might be stronger, and why. And I have to say that um, it happens a lot. People ask for advice about lists and things like that. And for these people to always reply and always be there to help, it actually takes a lot of time out of their days. And it's, that's just a, a sense of the community that is within Gut Busters. Just really positive. Everyone trying to help each other. Everyone just loves ogres. Everyone loves being the underdog a bit. And um, I just wanted to give a special shout out to those guys. There are some others there as well. Thomas, for example. Um, and I'm sure um, there's someone that I've forgotten. But um, um, I just want to give a shout out to those guys in particular because the Gut Busters community at the moment is everything I love about Warhammer community. Um, and if you wanted to be part of that community, everyone would be welcome. And uh, if you wanted to emulate a particular community, 
that would also be another good one is the um, uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma Sydney um, Facebook page that's just a uh, uh, smorgasbord of, um, of awesomeness as far as you know community participation in um, growing the hobby and um, and supporting each other's hobby as well I joined Twitter this year which is a great way to interact with people from overseas and uh, see what's going on with hobbies. Um, fortunately, there are some negative sides of Twitter as well, um, good and bad, but overall it has been positive. So community this year is fantastic. The, um, the, the scene is continuing to grow, both on sort of like a casual basis, you know, of just local players and, and people playing the hobby um, and people wanting to start. People coming from other systems, people coming from Warhammer 40k, uh, it really is growing quite a lot. And um, the tournament scene is absolutely exploding. We have more tournaments um, booked in this year than ever before, and uh, we have more larger tournaments booked in this year than ever before as well. And we have higher participation in all of those tournaments already, like you booked in, you know, than we did last year. So it's all up and up, and the growth is all positive so i just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone um thank you for your support this year with the channel hope you consider or continue to support me in um the new year as well next up we're going to talk about the gloom gits whatever they're bloody called and um the trog herd so um i'm not going to spend too much time on this there are a lot of people that have spent a lot of time on it um I think that's enough of that. So all I want to say is um, I think this release is really excellent. I love the video for the release of it. It was really, really cool. I think the Loon King is an amazing model. And uh, I think he's going to be a particularly powerful wizard as well, which I think is going to be excellent. Um, I think all of the new releases and the new models coming out with this release are um, really good like excellent um, most of them are not for me um, unless they somehow make the goblins an elite army so I have like a 40 model goblin army and then perhaps I'd be interested in it but in any sort of large model count numbers it's not something that I'm keen on I'm not sure if it's necessarily going to be that way it might actually be a complete revamp, but um, we're not sure. So, But all of the models of all the goblins look really, really good. Um, I'm not going to go and buy the goblins. Um, I'm probably not going to go buy the squigs. Um, because I don't have really interest in the army. But I do like them. I, I think they're really, really nice. Um, the trogs, the uh, trolls, are what I am all about. I love elite armies, I love, have always loved trolls, I love big models, um, and I'm so happy that these are getting new models, um, probably new rules as well. I've got, um, get my little river trolls here, starting to uh, put together in anticipation, and uh, I'll certainly be, going, be buying these trolls. I'm really happy with these trolls. One of the things I'm happy about the most with these trolls is their size. They're actually the size, like if you see the size comparison between the existing river trolls, which are a big model that I like already, to these um, uh, stinking new stone trolls here, um, the stone trolls are bigger. And I love the idea of playing with models that big on the tabletop. It's the right size between giant and, um, and big. They're somewhere in the middle, you know, because they're bigger than big, but they're not as big as giant. So... Um, the fact is they've sort of said that you will be able to do an all troll army and um, that's something I absolutely intend to do. Um, I have the suspicion that I have the suspicion that it's going to be like Beast Claw Raiders <laughs> where you've got these really cool beautiful models that are really strong but you always just suffer because of um, model count. But that's okay, like I'm, I'm really completely fine with that. Um, as long as I can have really cool models that look awesome, have a, a full troll themed army and have a hell of a lot of fun. If I need to add other things in there, hopefully I can just have like trolls and then like squeak herds. 
right, that would be a cool combination for me to, if I had to flesh out the army with other models for whatever reason, um, as long as I can keep the goblins out, um, that's probably my, my main priority. So I can have like, you know, little units of 10 squigs and, um, you know, a bunch of trolls sticking around, whatever that seems cool to me. I saw the temple, um, and it did say there that there's a chance you can bring back your shooters and your stabbers from the temple, which I hate the idea of. I mean, I don't know any details of it yet, but um, I really do not like summoning, and I really do not like bringing dead models back onto the table or regenerating models, like, well, not regenerating models, but bringing dead units back um, in this game. It's a real off-putting aspect of the game that seems to be creeping into me and um, I really don't like it at all so um, what do you call them? the hammers of sigma you know on a five up bring your battle line unit back really don't like that at all um, death bring units back I really don't like that at all the summoning yeah, at the moment with Nurgle and um, Beast of Chaos and stuff is not too bad but it's not something I'm a really big fan of so if I can play armies that don't use any of those mechanics, then I will. Um, and if it means I'm disadvantaged for that, well, so be it. But um, I don't really enjoy um, bringing the models back and ambushing them on and carrying extra models with me. Or I, it's just not something I, I really like. Um, so I'm excited for the trolls, and I've actually seen probably more excitement for the trolls than for the goblins so far which is funny because it was all about moon clan and um it seems that most of the people that weren't excited about moon clan have been excited about the trolls and that's probably more than the moon clan but um either way i think it's really really cool these look fantastic and i can't wait to get them paint them up as far as uh hobby goals for 2019 uh, well, for the next immediate future, I'm going to be playing with my gut busters as for tournaments, just um, taking them, having fun, um, trying to do as well as I can with them, but um, not taking life too seriously. I really love the ogre models. I um, I love the number of models in the army. Um, everything about them feels quite right to me, even though they lack in so many areas in the game. Um, there's something that just feels right about it, so we're going to keep that up going to make a, a variety of battle reports um, with many different armies so I don't need to keep playing the gut busters all the time in all practice games so I don't need to practice 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 with the gut busters for every time when I want to go in if I continue to just keep playing them and so that gives me the freedom to play against my friends in their tournament practice with whatever sort of army I feel like playing um, doing well at tournaments this year is nowhere near as important to me as it was last year. It's going to be a low year for me, um, but um, uh, so that's all positive. Uh, so there'll be much more reports of varied armies um, coming. I'm going to try to travel less for Warhammer, but compete in more tournaments with alternative sort of format so um, I want to do more doubles tournaments want to do more narrative tournaments want to travel to some tournaments that I still like Warhammer tournaments but have a different um, setup and a different scoring methods and things like that to the standard that we we generally see um, let's run across the board most importantly though, my hobby goal for 2019 is just to paint one army to a high standard. Um, I paint to a tabletop standard and I always have. I paint to a tournament painting rubric. I paint to get the job done. I paint to make the army look visually cohesive from a foot or two away, <laughs> two foot away. And... Um, and I also often rush a lot of my work and I paint in poor lighting in this room here. So this year, um, I just want to get one army and really take my time with it and try and use techniques I don't normally use 
and try to just achieve a consistent high standard across the whole army. My troll army is going to be the army I'm going to do that with and um, uh, it's probably going to be simply an ice type themed army because ice trolls are cool but also because painting ice effects and ice style is a um, it's a theme and paint techniques that have been well documented and there are quite a few tutorials for it and so that I'm actually able to watch them and then apply them to the army and then try to achieve a high standard that way. If I'm trying to achieve a high standard on a theme which I've tried to make up myself that's never been done before, I'm sort of putting the cart before the horse, right? So um, maybe that'll be my son, but I really do want um, this army in every aspect from the basing um, through to the models to be painted really, really nice. Um, and when I say to a high standard, I want it to be of the standard that when I go to a tournament, people think the painting is really excellent and I'm considered for painting awards. That's what I would like to try and achieve. So no rush on this army. Um, and I think the, the, trog, the troll models are going to be perfect for that as well because they're large models and um, uh, the, the sort of model I can take my time with and I can perfect on one model and then you know apply to the next one and I don't have to batch paint 200 or anything like that so so that's it folks that's uh, my 2018 and 2019 hobby goals I just want to say what I said before which is a big thank you to everyone in the community thank you to everyone that supports the channel as a subscriber or a patron or even if you just watch the videos without doing those if you do please um, uh, please click that subscribe button it really does help me out a lot uh, thank you to the online community and the content creators as well for your ongoing support and your friendship. Um, it really means a lot to me. Thank you to all of the people just in the Age of Sigma community for being supportive of each other and um, helping continue to put effort into helping new people and sharing all of your own hobby um, goals because that's one thing that I find that drives um, the community in a positive manner. And um, I can't wait to see what happens in 2019. I will say is one passing comment. The person that told me that Doors of Cain were real and then that Ideneth were coming as well and then proved to be completely right about both of those has told me that the next books are going to be Fire Slayers, a Fire Slayer Battle Tone, revised one, um, and then the Skaven Tone. That's what I've been told is coming next. I trust him now because he was completely right about the turtle riding elves, which I completely doubted him on. Turns out to be true. So if he's told me this, I'm gonna have to believe him, right? That's what's coming next. So better get my scaven ready. That's it folks. Thanks for watching. I can't wait for trolls and I'll see you in the new year.